Good morning, Grade 7, and welcome to Worksheet Cloud Grade 7 Natural Sciences. If you have a question during this lesson, send an email with your question to grade 7 at worksheetcloud.com. My name is Mrs. Hall, and today I'm going to be teaching you on the historical development of astronomy. Now, Grade 7s, as we go through this lesson, we look at a lot of different beliefs and we look at different cultures and what they believe from the stars and the moon and the planets. So let's remember to be respectful of each other and understanding of different cultures and beliefs. So today's objectives, Grade 7, is to decide how did ancient astronomers use the motions of the sun, moon and stars for timekeeping and how did ancient astronomers view our place in the solar system. So as you all know astronomy is one of the oldest sciences. Ancient civilizations around the world watched the night skies noting the patterns they saw in the sky. These patterns are called the constellations. Now a constellation is any group of stars as seen from Earth that seems to, form a diff uh, uh, seems to form a pattern or picture in the sky. Different nations, cultures and people have given different names for the different star patterns and how they interpreted these patterns. A well-known example is the Southern Cross. Have a look at the photos which show the stars in the night sky and how to view the pattern making up the cross. Here we have a photo with the Southern Cross and take a good look at those pointer stars. The white lines show you how to view the Southern Cross. Now the Southern Cross and the two bright pointer stars were used by farmers to mark the beginning of the planting season. According to Sutu, Swana and Venda traditions, these stars were called Dutuwa, meaning the giraffes. The bright stars of the cross are male giraffes and the two pointers are female giraffes. Can you see them here in this picture? Another example is the constellation of Orion. It is named after Orion, a supernaturally strong hunter in Greek mythology. This is one of the most recognized constellations around the world, and many cultures have identified with it, each forming their own myths, many around a strong man or a hunter. And if you look over here, this shows the image of how the pattern of stars in Orion makes the image of the hunter. The, the name planet comes from the Greek word planets or planetus. Hope I've got that right, which means wanderer. Planets were called wanderers by the ancient Greeks as they move across the sky relative to the background stars. People also watch the movement of stars and planets across the sky, marking the passage of time. Early cultures tended to identify the stars and planets they saw in the night sky with gods, spirits or animals. Ancient astronomers could tell the difference between stars and planets as the relative positions of the stars remain fixed in the sky, whereas planets appear to move across the sky relative to the background stars. Not all the planets were known to the ancient people, rather only Mercury, Venus, Mars, Jupiter and Saturn. Uranus and Neptune were only discovered after telescopes were invented. We have seven days of the week due to the seven moving celestial bodies known to the ancient people, namely the Sun, the Moon, Mercury, Venus, Mars, Jupiter and Saturn. Here we have the days of the week and the astrology signs and here we have the planets. Saturn was Saturday, 
Jupiter, Thursday, Mars, Tuesday, Sun, Sunday, Venus, Friday, Mercury, Wednesday, and the Moon, Monday. Ancient civilizations like the Sumerians, Babylonians, and Egyptians were responsible for introducing many of the constellations that astronomers use in the West today. Astronomy played an important role in religion at the time, and the dates of festivals and holy days were fixed by the alignment of the stars or the phase of the moon. In fact, the ancient Egyptian and Mayan pyramids and temples were designed in such a way that the sun, moon, stars and planets would be visible from the top or through certain windows at important times of the year, such as solstices or equinoxes. Some people believe that the builders of the ancient pyramids of Giza in Egypt place them specifically to look the same from above as the three belt stars of the constellation, Orion, look from Earth. Here in South Africa, early cultures also had their own constellations and stories, which were passed down from generation to generation. Early cultures use the stars for navigation. When traveling to new areas or over water, they would have been unable to use familiar landmarks. When viewed from a particular location, a star always rises and sets in the same direction and follows the same path across the sky. We are familiar with this idea as the sun is a star and we see it rise and set in the same direction every day. Early navigators learned to use the directions of rising and setting stars to find their way. Early cultures also used the observed changes in the sky for timekeeping. A day was marked by the time between one sunrise and the next, just as it is today. The moon's regular phases made it a very convenient clock and the time period between one new moon and the next form the basis of many of the oldest calendars. The lunar cycle was useful because it was predictable in the same way as day and night. However, each moon cycle was also connected to a slightly different season with its own name and activities. Tally sticks made of bones with notches etched into them have been found dating as far back as 20 to 30,000 years ago and are believed to mark the phases of the moon. Today we use a solar calendar, a calendar in which a year is defined by the complete revolution of the earth around the sun. But some religious calendars still use a lunar calendar. Accurate timekeeping was particularly important for farming communities because people needed to know when to plant their seeds and when to harvest their crops. Now the Limbombo bone was discovered in the Limbombo mountains between South Africa and Swaziland in the 1970s. It is a bone from a baboon used as a tally stick. You can actually see the tallies etched into the bone over there. It is roughly 35,000 years old. It is thought to have been used for tracking lunar cycles due to the 29 marks on it. Wow, isn't science amazing, grade sevens? Now, the Pleiades, also, know, also called the Seven Sisters, is a bright cluster of stars. Traditional farming communities in South Africa use the Pleiades to help them plan their planting. Once a constellation was visible in the early morning in June, they knew it was time to start planting their crops. The calendar we use today is the Gregorian calendar and is the most widely used around the world. It is also known as the Western calendar or the Christian calendar. 
It was named after the man who first introduced it in February 1582. Pope Gregory XIII. This, the term New Year's Day for the 1st of January was adopted in Western Europe in the Middle Ages. Before this, the Roman calendar, um, the Roman Julian calendar, calendar named after Julius Caesar was used. The Roman influence in the Gregorian calendar explains why the months of July, Julius, and August, Augustus, are named after Roman emperors. The Islamic year begins on the first day of the month of Muharram. It is counted from the year of Hegira, when Muhammad immigrated from Mecca to Medina. The Jewish calendar represents the number of years since they believe the world was created. This is calculated by adding up the ages of people in the Bible. So when someone of Jewish belief says that the year is 5,763, it means 5,763 years from the creation of Adam. As well as their practical uses in timekeeping, stories surrounding the sun, moon and constellations have been passed down from generation to generation. These mythical stories are called star law. Some believe that after sunset, the sun travelled back to the east over the top of the sky and that the stars are small holes which let the light through. Others said that the sun is eaten each night by a crocodile and that it emerges from the crocodile each morning. Being the most prominent object in the night sky, the moon also has many stories and legends associated with it. If you look closely at the moon, you can see that it has lighter and darker patches. The pattern formed by the light and dark patches had been interpreted differently by different cultures. Some see the rabbit, others a buffalo, others a man in the moon. What do you see, grade sevens? One urban legend that some people still incorrectly believe is that the full moon is linked to insanity. There is no evidence to support the claims of increased birth rates, admissions to psychiatric hospitals, traffic accidents, homicides or suicides during a full moon. But lunacy and lunatic are derived from the Latin name for the moon Luna. But it's all an urban legend. The Khoi Khoi called the moon calm or Kaab, meaning the returner. The Khoikhoi also considered the moon to be the lord of light and life and would sing and dance at times of new and full moon. In Iksam San star law, there is the following um, story. The moon is a man who has made the sun angry. The sun's sharp light cuts off pieces of the moon until almost the whole of the moon is gone, leaving only one small piece. The moon then pleads for mercy and the sun lets him go. From this small piece, the moon gradually grows again until it becomes a full moon. So many interesting stories out there. The Milky Way is is also a prominent feature of the South African nighttime sky, visible away from cities. Ancient people in South Africa described the Milky Way as a footpath across the sky along which the ancestor spirits walked. In sand star law, the Milky Way was created by a girl who scooped up a handful of ashes from a fire and flung them into the sky. This made a glowing path along which people could see their route to return home at night. That's also another beautiful story. Meteors, also called shooting stars and comets, also feature heavily in star lore around the world. In most cultures, meteors 
and comets were regarded as signs of important events. In, Sw in Swana star law, a very bright meteor is an indication of a good season ahead. However, the Ksusan saw a meteor as an evil spirit racing across the sky to cause mischief among people. The Ixamsan thought that a meteor announced the death of one of them. In Kosa star law, a comet Uzat Shoba is associated with bad luck, wars and death. There was also a strong belief that comets predicted the death of a chief. The Sutus called comets Naledi Cha Mesala and the Zulus called them Inkayezi Emosile, which means stars with tails. Grade sevens, what an interesting lesson today. I was fascinated by all the different stories and all the different cultures and traditions of using the sun and the moon and the stars. Very entertaining and very interesting. And I hope it sparks a little bit of debate amongst you. But remember to be respectful of each other and your cultures and your traditions. I just want to end off with um, a cartoon that really grabbed me and made sense to me because here you have all these scientists throwing a big fat party saying furthest star ever seen by astronomers, 9 billion light years away. Big celebration. And then this guy over here cleaning says, well, they all look alike to me. And that's exactly the same for me. As much as I love science and I love learning about science, when I look up in that night sky, they all look the same to me, but I do enjoy looking for the Southern Cross. Um, grade sevens, thanks for watching. I hope you've learned something new um, and you found it interesting like I did. Um, um, enjoy the rest of your afternoon and I look forward to seeing you again in my next lesson. Take care.